we think about kind of the longevity of the eye is a pretty important thing, right? If you want to figure out a way to live to a hundred, mm -hmm. you, we, we spend a lot of time thinking about, well, you've got to really, really delay the onset of atherosclerosis. You have to have a very aggressive strategy around the mitigation of cancer, Alzheimer's disease, and all of these things. Right. But it's these other things, teeth, ears, and eyes that I don't think get enough attention, right? I mean, it's, you don't want to get to be a hundred and have no teeth and you don't want to get to be a hundred and be deaf and you don't want to get to be a hundred and be blind. Yeah, those all sound bad. Yeah, so I mean, the things I'm picking up, unfortunately for many of us listening to this, we can't go back and change what we did as kids. Mm -hmm. uh, we can certainly make a change in our kids so we can make sure that they are outside in natural sunlight. Right. Um, I don't put sunglasses on my kids. I don't, should I be doing that? Yeah, I mean, probably. You know, it's trying to get a kid to wear sunglasses is tough. I We gotta come up with better toys. like. My kids love trains, so if I could figure out a way to tell them that wearing sunglasses was train-like, right. this would be good. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, you see kids who are snow skiing, for example, and they're, they should be wearing goggles because those have built-in UV, UV yep. protection. Um, so that typically works you know, for that type of thing. But gosh, when they're water skiing, they certainly can't wear glasses. If they're swimming, they can't wear sunglasses. Uh, there's a certain Although goggles these days are pretty good. That's that true. Front. Yeah. Yeah. I, that's, it's hard to get my kids to wear goggles, but you know, there's a certain amount of just UV exposure. I don't think it's possible to avoid. So the trade-off is yeah. when in doubt, keep them out. Yeah. You know, hats are important as well. We didn't really talk about that. Yeah. You know, I think that that's a very good and effective way, but it's not enough because a certain amount of light bounces off yeah. and hits the bottom of your cheek and goes right into your eye so it's so for those of us that are now adults basically we've, right. we've kind of cast our lot uh with respect to that malleable period of changing the the length the well you know we didn't really talk about like what nutritional supplements might have yeah, some effect yeah. and you know it, it's interesting because we know that with cataract that vitamin c deficiency is associated with an elevated risk of cataract but it's been shown really conclusively that vitamin C supplementation to supranormal levels does not protect against cataract formation. And the things that have been looked at, I know A, C, and E, basically antioxidants have been looked at. They've had no effect on, on cataract formation. There is a little bit of mixed weak evidence for lutein and zeaxanthine as possibly being protective for cataract. Also antioxidants, right? Yes, that's correct. And, you know, the macular degeneration, we didn't really touch on that very much, but that's a, a huge problem. Um, you may have seen in the drugstore, they sell ARIDS, A-R-E-D-S uh, mm -hmm. formula for macular degeneration. That stands for the age-related eye disease study that was, again, a National Eye Institute initiative and first, they looked at um, CE and beta carotene with zinc and a little copper. I guess they put the copper in because they were worried about copper deficiency with zinc supplementation. Um, and then they got concerned about beta carotene. So they did another study where they took beta carotene out and put in lutein and zeaxanthine, powerful antioxidants. And what they showed was that you could delay or reduce the conversion of mild macular degeneration to severe, but it had no effect on severe disease. And it also interestingly had no effect on people who didn't have macular degeneration. It didn't prevent them, didn't from, prevent them. from going on to get it. But I think most of us believe that there's something there. There's some signal embedded in that noise. Is light also a big risk for macular degeneration? It is. It is. So again, it's this dose thing. We want enough light so you don't become nearsighted, but not so much that you're frying your retinas and giving yourselves cataracts. Um, but I do think that some form of, of broad spectrum antioxidant protection makes sense.